So this is the lesson where um, a lot of grade 11 students start falling apart. Primarily because either you can't factor or you don't remember how to add and subtract fractions. So I'm going to start with a really basic one here, which is something you would have done in probably grade 7, where you're adding two fractions together. And you probably remember that in order to add a fraction together, you have to have a common denominator. In other words, you can't add a half and a third without knowing how many parts, equal parts, that would be. And that's when you would convert to six. In this case, though, we have a quarter and three fifths. So the lowest common denominator, and that's what you're going to do with the, the um, more difficult expressions here as well. What is the lowest common denominator of four and five? And you should probably say 20, right? So I'm going to put them over 20. And in order to put them over 20, it means that I had to multiply the first one by five. So this is times five. And whatever you do to the denominator, you must also do to the numerator. And if I multiply this one by four and this one by four, then I would have them over 20. So notice the denominators are going to be 20s. 1 times 5 is 5, and 3 times 4 is 12. And 12 and 5 make 17 over 20. So you have to understand the basics of working with fractions in order for you to be successful with the, um, the rational expressions that we're going to add and subtract. So the next one here is getting one step harder. We take a look at the denominator and we say, okay, how could I make these denominators the very same? So what is the lowest common denominator I can have with a 3 and a 6? Well, you'd probably say 6. So that means this needs to be multiplied by 2. But I would still be without an x. So in order to make this denominator the same as this one, and that would be the lowest common denominator, I'm going to put them both over 6x squared. And I'm going to write it just like this. So we have one denominator of 6x squared. Just like in the end here, we had one denominator of 20. I'm just going to do it in one step now. So I didn't do anything to this fraction. It was already over 6x squared. So I leave the 5 there. But this one, in order to make a 3x, a 6x squared, I had to multiply by 2x times 2x. So if I multiply this by 2x, I have to do the same to the numerator. Treat all your little fractions equally, just like children. So that's 4x plus 5 over 6x squared. And lastly, you would have to still state what is the restriction on the denominator. And here you would say x is not equal to 0. Okay, so far so good, because they're going to get harder. Okay, the next one I have here is 1 over 2xy minus 3 over y squared plus x. Now, anything can be written over 1, right? So right away, this is x over 1. That's okay. Now I look at the denominator and I say, okay, what would be the lowest common denominator of 2xy and y squared and a 1? Well, this one's just going to be whatever it is, right? So I have a y squared, and this one doesn't have a y squared. So that means I'm going to have to multiply this by a y to make a y squared. And once I do that, I would have 2xy squared, which is okay for this one, but this one would need to be multiplied by 2x. So I put 2x here and here. And a y here. Whatever you do to the denominator, you must also do to the numerator. So now my denominator is going to be 2xy squared. And obviously this doesn't have either of those terms. So I'm going to multiply it by 2xy squared and 2xy squared. And that's going to make it really easy to solve once I do that. Okay, so my common denominator, I'm going to put it all over here, is 2xy squared. Okay, we decided that's what it was going to be. I multiplied 
the 1 by y, so I have a y here. I have minus 3 times 2x, that's minus 6x. And this one, x times 2xy squared, is going to give me plus 2x squared y squared. And that's it, I'm done. I still have to state the restrictions. Restrictions are what makes the denominator zero. And in this case, x cannot be equal to zero and y cannot be equal to zero because a zero in either of these positions would give me a zero in the denominator. Okay, so you're probably saying, oh, that's not so hard. Let's go on to one more here. This one would be this would probably be maybe a level two question if your teacher marks in levels. And again, you look at the denominator. You say, well, how can I make these the same? Now, don't tell me that you're going to multiply by three and add three to make a plus one. No, 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 no. Think of these as little families. These things go together. So if there's not brackets, I would suggest if you have a binomial in the denominator that you do that so you recognize that you can't just split these things up. So the lowest common denominator that I can have here is going to be this times this. So I'm going to make it 3x plus 1 times x minus 2. So if I make this my denominator, it means that I had to multiply this by x minus 2 and this by 3x plus 1, right? So I'm going to make it really small here. This is going to be 3x plus 1 down here. This is going to be 3x plus 1. And this is going to be times x minus 2. And this one, I'll put it out front, x minus 2. Okay, so once I've done that, you can see I've made the denominator this. You don't have to expand it just leave this alone because most of the time you're trying to find restrictions or you might be trying to graph this so you want this to be in factored form. So in the top here now I have, I'm going to write it out uh, like this first and then expand it so you don't miss something along the way. 3, 3x plus 1. So you need to expand and simplify the numerator. So that's what I'm going to do here expand and simplify. But I'm going to leave the denominator alone. Leave this alone. You know the little song, can't touch this? Da 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 Don't touch this. Okay, so I'm going to expand the top. So I have 2x times x is 2x squared. 2x times minus 2 is minus 4x. 3 times 3 is 9x's, and 3 times 1 is 3. All over, move this up a bit, all over 3x plus 1 times x minus 2. And I still have one more step to do here with the uh, numerator because you see I have some terms here that can be simplified. One more step. So that's going to give me 2x squared plus 5x plus 3 all over 3x plus 1 times x minus 2. What are the restrictions on the denominator here? So the expression, this cannot be 0. So I'm going to write it here. You can probably do this in your head, but if you can't, this is how you would find it. This is not giving the restriction, it's solving for what makes this equal to zero. So I bring this across, divide by three. So when x is minus one third, this would be equal to zero. So that means x is not equal to minus one third. Don't leave it here, okay? Might even write a little statement here. And the other one, this is easy. What makes this zero when x is two? So x cannot be equal to 2. Now the last one I'm going to do is one from the textbook. And it's um, a really difficult one. And I think it kind of summarizes everything all in one step. So you have to remember order of operations when you're doing this kind of question. So you have three things going on here. You have this plus 
all of this stuff times this one. So using order of operations, that means that you have to multiply before you can add and subtract. So you might want to put some brackets around them. You might have had a division sign here, in which case, just like in the last exercise, you had to invert and multiply. So I have all this, and now I have to somehow figure out what the common denominator is going to be when I try to add these two. So in order, you wouldn't be able to tell me what's a common denominator between these two things. And just say I was adding these. You wouldn't know unless you factored it. Once you've got it in factored form, you can see those little pieces in the bottom that make up the factors and which you're going to use to multiply. So let's leave this one as it is in the top, but we're going to factor it because we're going to have to anyway when we go to add after we've done this. So you must do this first. Must do this first. Order of operations, bed mass. Remember brackets, exponents, division, multiplication, addition, subtraction. So this, this is going to be your last operation. Okay, so I have p plus one in the denominator. Um, I'm not gonna write out all the product sums. Let's uh, use our head a little bit. Multiplies to minus 35, adds to two. So it's going to be p, one's going to be seven, one's going to be five. Which one is positive? The seven, because they have to add to um, a positive two. And here, I'm going to leave my brackets here because I need to, I need to do all this first. p squared plus p minus 12 multiplies to minus 12, adds to positive one. So that would be four and negative three. So like I said, you have to get really good at doing these factors. Multiplies to negative 24, adds to negative 2. That would be minus 6 and plus 4. And multiplication here multiplies to negative 12, adds to negative 4. So that would be P minus 6 and P plus 2. And finally in the denominator, multiplies to negative 15, adds to plus 2. That's going to be P, P plus 5 times P minus 3. Okay, so once you have those set up, then because this is multiplication, remember it has to be, you can't divide these out. Okay, please, please be, be very careful. Make sure you've got little packages to divide out. You can't divide out just values like this. We explained that in the, in the multiplication and division section of rational expressions. So go back and, and look at that one. Okay, so now it's a free-for-all. Whatever I can find, I can divide out. And I have a p minus 3 here, and I have a p minus 3 here. And across here, I have a p minus 6 and a p minus 6. And then you might see you have these two, a p plus 4 and a p plus 4. So that one and that one. Now this just becomes a 1. Right? There's like everything divided into each one time. So I have one times this, which means I just have this left over. So back to this part here. I haven't done the adding part of this. So I have P plus 7 times P minus 5. And to that I need to add P plus 2 over P plus 5. So I've, I've simplified this considerably, right, from this. I'm right down to this now. This, this cleaned up very nicely. And now I look to the denominator and I say, okay, well, what can I use for a common denominator to add these together? Now, this isn't a very nice one. Sometimes they're, they're a little bit easier to work with. But this one, I'm going to have to use all of these three things because nothing is the same, right? Every, every little bracket here is it has a different value to it. So I'm going to make this P plus 7 times P minus 5 times P plus 5. And you may recognize that this is a difference of squares. It could be written as P squared minus 25. Okay, so now I have to multiply the top. So this one, 
This one got multiplied by p plus 5, so I have to multiply this and put it in brackets or else you might forget how to expand it properly. And this one got multiplied by these two things. So this is p plus 7 times p minus 5. Let's extend this. So I have p plus 7 times p minus 5. And we're going to put brackets around that one. Okay, so this is easy. I can multiply this very easily. p times p is p squared plus 5p plus 1p would be 6p's and 1 times 5 is 5. And I'm going to add what the product is of all this. So I'm going to have to do it in two parts because it's really hard to multiply three binomials together. So I'm going to put a big bracket here just so I don't forget that I have to do this before I add it to this one. So I'm going to leave this one out and I'm going to multiply these two together first. So that's going to be p squared minus 5 plus 7 is plus 2p and 7 times minus 5 is minus 35. So you can see some of these can be pretty long. And of course, if it had been dividing, you would have had to flip all that around as well. Okay, so we carry on. This would be like one of the hardest questions on your test, right? Okay, maybe your teacher might even have trouble doing this one. Mm, it's not hard, it's just long. Okay, so now I have to do P times each of these and 2 times each of these because I'm still doing some expansion here. So p times p squared is p cubed um, plus 2p squared minus 35p. So I've done all the p's. Now I'm going to multiply everything times 2. Plus 2p squared plus 4p minus 70. Now I've removed the brackets because I've finished all the expansion. I could actually use a ruler to underline this one. It's so long. So long. Boop, like that. And my denominator is p plus 7. And I'm going to get fancy and write p squared minus 25. That cleans it up just a little bit. And now you have to gather like terms. So I have a p cubed. That's my first one. p squares, I have 1 plus 2 is 3 plus 2 is 5. 5p squared. How many p's do I have? I have 6 of them here. Minus 35, that's minus 29. Plus 4 is minus 25p. And finally I have plus 5, minus 70 is minus 65. And that's all over p plus 7 times p squared minus 25. Okay, so the only thing we haven't done here is state the restrictions. Now remember I said restrictions need to be seen right after you factored. So this line here, and this is where I'm going to look for all my restrictions. And because it's been, it was multiplication, I don't have to look to the numerator as well. So I'm going to look at all the things that P can't be equal to. P is not equal to minus 7. It's not equal to 5. It's not equal to 6 or minus 4 or minus 5 or plus 3. Now if it repeats you don't write them out twice. It can only you know you don't have to do that. So I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 restrictions on the domain and that's how you add rational expressions. Not too easy but it's just take your time, be careful. So please let me know how things are going for you. Um, if there's something you want me to do from your homework, I think this was 9C. I'm not sure what page it was, but it was from the section on adding and subtracting rational expressions. So I'll just write 9C here. You can look it up. You'll find it right away because it has all these P's in it. That's a very long question. Okay, so... Good luck with that. Um, make sure you're doing your homework. If you don't do your homework, 
You can't learn by just watching. You must do. Bye for now.